Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and look how we could look into how we can make a basic island. So this is just a basic island, um, but an island nonetheless. So uh, this has been a request that has been given to me numerous times, so I am going to go ahead and fulfill that request here. Um, numerous people all over the place have asked me if I could do this real quick. Um, and I'm doing this without the island node, and I I like the island node. It it's creative. You can do a lot of stuff with it still, but I don't get the results I personally want with the island node. And I believe it's one of those that's going to be reworked anyways. So the way I made this one is I used the mountain primitive, just a very basic mountain here. Um, I changed some things up a little bit. I increased the scale and the edge a little bit just so I can have a nice soft edge here. Um, but other than that, everything was default from when I loaded the scene. I then used a transform node here. And what I, I used the transform node is because I wanted to take the overall size of the mountain we had and shrink it down so it's the same thing, just smaller, um, so we can have a little more water to show off the island features. I apologize for the noise you might be hearing. My dogs are in this room. And if I don't have them in this room, they whine and moan, and they hate being separated from humans, and they bust open my door, and it sounds like the Hulk entered the room. So I just keep them in here. Um, and then I eroded it. Um, and I eroded it using just some very basic uh, erosion here. Not, not very much going on here, but you can look at the uh, settings that I changed. I then added the coast. Now, the coast is a little bit more tricky because we do have to have this coastline right here that we have to generate and you have to finagle these settings very in a minor way so we have large low amounts of water the beach size is small the transition is small and i did that because this beach right here is what i was aiming for i wanted there to be a beach so i kept very small amounts here Next would be the lakes. Now the lakes will change this quite a bit. So it is an actual height field note. It will change the way your um, overall shape will look. And you can see that right here where it flattens out down here. But it kept my beach from the coast. So I used both of those together uh, to get this. So now we have our beach, we have our lakes. And our lakes is, you know, it's I'm using larger amounts of precipitation, I believe, or smaller amounts, whichever the two is, uh, or whichever what whichever one it is, I can't remember which way I went, but that's what I ended up using was just a little bit more or less precipitation. And uh, that was it. I didn't have a mask coming in through the rainfall. Um, I just started texturing from here. So first, that, that t right there takes care of the island. I mean, you can get whatever shape you want, but this is just a basic island. You can get whatever shape you want doing the exact same thing. It's just if you end with the coast and the lakes, you'll end up getting a good island look if you can finagle the settings a bit. Uh, but you can have 20 nodes over here building up the way you want your island to look. And then as long as you end with these two, uh, you'll you'll end up getting the island look. So, uh, And you can have multiple islands too. So you can have, uh, say we have like this mountain right here through the transform, you can input a chain through the draw node like over here uh, going around the side of the mountain so there's like some island offsets right here as long as you're using that transform to place it wherever you want so you can use the transform to scale as well as move things on the X and Y axis so uh, you don't have to just scale it you can do multiple multitudes of things you can even rotate it if you want so anyways uh, this texture is going to be I believe our rock Yep, so that'll be our rock texture first. That goes into this slope. This slope selects all the lower uh, slopes, not the or the not the steep slopes. And this will be our uh, kind of grass and uh, trees and stuff like that, as you can see here. And I just blend those together using my typical methods, using blend with a ratio of 100%. That brings out the rock and our foresty areas. Next is this auto level, and I'm using this auto level on the flow. And the reason why is because I wanted to break up the minutia a little bit, or I guess not the minutia, but the, the green with a little bit more uh, dirt and whatnot. So 
I went ahead and applied a auto level, attached a texture node to it so it breaks up the very straight selections here. The set map itself is just going to be green and brown. And then I just put those together in a mixer. And that's what we get. So it's just a little bit of dirt. It's not, it doesn't stand out a whole lot. But I'm, again, I'm using blend at 100%. Um, and I am using the mask inputs for these mixers. So there's the mask input here that goes to the slope. And this one goes to the texture. That way it brings out the texture um, more or less. All right, now this is where the fun part comes in. So this is going to be the water is what we're working on the most. So right here, you can see I have this set to the depth or the shore. Yeah, this is the shore. So this will be our beach. Our sand goes to an auto level, which then goes to this texture. We'll let that build out. And this texture will break up again, just give us some variation in the shoreline. That way we don't have a very straight and band looking color map available to us. We, we want to uh, break that up a little bit, make it a little bit more natural. And you can be a lot more selective with it too. I didn't. Again, this is just a basic island. So if you wanted a more advanced island, we, we can go into that a little later. But right now, this is just basic. You see here, it breaks up uh, that uh, any small amount of tiling we would have gotten because we're using the texture attached to the auto level. And then the set map is simply just a sandy color that I liked. And I put that into a mixer. And again, I just mixed it based on uh, the texture. Or in this case, I think I used the auto level, not the texture itself, because it brought out additional details I liked more. So now we have this sandy rock color down here, and it kind of fades up into the rest of our island. This one right here, I believe, is the depth or the lakes. It, yeah, this is the lakes goes to an auto level. And the reason why I use the auto level is because I can visualize what's happening here. Plus it also um, strengthens the mask a bit more. So things are a bit more tight. And I put that against just a set map because we don't need band or we don't need a break up banding here. Um, there's, it's going to be flat blue anyways. So went ahead and put that in. And now we have uh, our beach and our water coming in. This one will be the depth, as you can see here. It goes to the depth right here. I attached a displace to that. Uh, so this is what we have before the depth. And this is what we have after with the displace. And the reason why I use the displace is because I just, there's there was quite a bit of banding in the set map here. So the displacement broke that banding up a bit. And that's when we ended up with this. And it looks better when it's mixed together. So these, Areas out here are what's going to mix pretty well. So let's go ahead and put those together. And now we have some pretty decent fall off uh, going out towards uh, the deeper parts of the ocean. And I'm using the mask on the auto level here. Um, the reason uh, you could also use the displace here um, as the mask might change it up a little bit like this. And that was the problem I had. So it's an issue that I didn't quite fix. So I just went ahead and used this mask for the, uh, oh, not that one. Whoops, which one did I do? Uh, let's see. Uh, that still looks pretty cool though. Kind of breaks up a little bit more, but that's not what I wanted. Uh, it's this one. I just went straight to the auto level, but that's okay because even though we're using this as the mask, the displace, and the color is still taking on the displaced properties. Uh, so we're still getting the less banding in the color here. I then decided that I wanted to bring in the coastline a bit more. So from here, I took the coast right here and attached it to a height. That way I can see the coast when I was making the selection of the height uh, a little bit easier. And then I attached a texture to that, again, just to break it up. You can see here it includes additional little formations. And I used another sandy color here with a little bit of green just to introduce a tiny bit more vegetation. And that's what we ended up with. So we went from this 
to this, and that just brought it out a little bit more, especially these cliff areas. But then I noticed that it got a little bit too uh, uniform across the entire look. So um, I went ahead and made a slope selection, and this is selecting the steeper parts. I used the same color map that I had for our rock, uh, or I applied a texture to it, that way it broke it up a bit more. Um, then I used a uh, color map that matched the rock that we already had, and I put that back together, and this is what we ended up with. And I'm using add in this case. Uh, I didn't need to include... Oops. Hold on. I'm getting lost here. Where is this one going? This one's going down here. Sorry. Uh, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> okay. So, um... This one's down here. You can see the kind of change that it put in the rock and whatnot. But we do have this one. And if you notice the water, uh, there's no little noise in there. It's just a really flat blue. I wanted to introduce something that could be like water shimmer or waves. So I went ahead and uh, added a little bit of noise using kind of the same method that Dax used um, in his, uh, his, what is it called that? Arctic land, Arctic lake or whatever it is that he he introduced a little bit ago so it's a constant but what i ended up doing is instead of just using a constant and a perlin noise i actually use the angle here uh as a mask to the perlin that way the perlin takes on the angle direction that i chose then attach that to the noise and the reason why i use that angle is because that the light over here is set at 25 degrees so i set the angle here at 25 degrees that way the color uh, or the, the light shimmer from the waves is kind of coming at the same angle as the light. So that's that's what I was thinking. I don't know if it's working and practice just yet, but um, I got to finagle a few things out a bit more to get it more perfect. But uh, that was the idea, is to make sure that we had the noise flowing in the same angle as the light. Um, after I did that, you can see we added just a little bit of that shimmer here. Uh, quote unquote, and then I just added a vegetation node and this vegetation node adds vegetation down on the beach because I didn't want it to just be a purely uh, sandy beach. I mean some beaches have trees that grow on it. They do have a tree line, but um, a lot of times they'll have like other vegetation that might grow on it. So I just kind of went with the, the defaults here, but I turned the slope down to 7% on the bottom and I'm also using the height input here. So I'm um, not doing anything very specific there. All I did is I changed the occurrence and density to 100%, and then I changed the slope bottom to be a little less than what it was because I didn't want vegetation to be all the way up to the beach. I'm still getting there a little bit, um, but it broke it up a lot more when I reduced the, the slope bottom. So um, we do now have vegetation growing down here, which is what I wanted. And you don't even have to use this just for the vegetation. You can do like a darker brown and rock color that you can find in the vegetation maps it might work like this one. This one could be like stone that is appearing in the, uh, on the, uh, the beach, if you wanted that. I mean, it's, it's all up to you. You don't get a whole lot of options in the vegetation maps here that you can really choose, but, um, it's nice to just add a little bit of variety. So yeah, like that could be like, rock a rocky beach here something you can use the distribution map right here that you can export out and you can uh, scatter rocks on the beach instead of plants i mean you can do whatever you want and then your color map will match the the color of your rocks and then here's my light and the light usually takes the longest to build especially at uh ultra quality but it's uh as you can see here the sun elevation is at 21 percent, and then the sun azimuth is at 25 percent. so i just wanted to match the angle for the shimmer on the water to the light direction so i don't know how well it turned out um it it looks fine it's fake shimmer anyways it can do it or not do it it's totally up to you but that is what we ended up with after doing this basic island so a few things that you can take away from this is instead of just using a mountain you can use like a mountain range and you can combine those together to have like mountains that appear on the let's say the east coast and the west coast of the island or the north and south or the east and north or you know whatever it is that you want you can use the range 
uh, mountain range node or just the range node is what it's called to kind of bring in additional mountain chains rather than relying on just a single mountain feature like this. So this is a good basic starter island. It's not the most perfect, but it will do the job. And the play area, if you're doing this for a game, is humongous. These beaches are huge as well. And um, if you wanted to use the color map to this, you could, and it looks fantastic as a, as a starter map. So um, if you guys have any other suggestions for tutorials, let's go ahead and hear them. I will put them together when I get some time. Um, I'm also going to be making a more advanced island tutorial, but just to get you guys started on a few things that you can do is a good way to start. Just start simple and then build on it rather than trying to start with something complex. Um, the way that I learned Gaia uh, is just getting in every day or as often as I could and just plugging in different nodes into different areas and then seeing what the effects were and then jotting them down on some paper or making a mental note that some stuff worked and some stuff didn't. So um, yeah, just start simple. You don't have to make it complex and then you'll end up with something better in the end if you just remember the basics. And getting a basics of an island like this is totally fine. So good place to start. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video.